My name is Steve Kinsley. I'm the Chief Wackadoo at Wackadoo Information Systems. Today we're talking about how to add a new contract. Now, there are two different ways that you can do this. You can do it yourself or you can have an agent do it directly from a link that you send them. We're going to talk about how you do this yourself. There's another video about working with agents that will talk about how to send them a link that will get them to this page for themselves to be able to add contracts. Now, in the upper left hand corner, we see that we're on the default page that you get when you lo first log in, and that is the active contracts page. If you were to come down here and say new, watch what happens to the menu up above. We're actually on the add page for the inbox because this is where you have all of the different information. The contract page just shows contracts. The inbox page shows contract info, agent info, client info, uh, co-op agents, closing attorney, all of this stuff. So what you would do is you would come out here and you would say, for example, oh, I'm just going to say Adam Agent, obviously a fake name. Uh, commission on this is going to be 3% on this particular deal. Maybe there's an admin fee, you know, let's put in, you know, $125 or something. Um, there is a, a CAPTCHA here um, that, it, again, simple, num I can do math, simple numeric answer. Um, and maybe you put in a contract note. This is a, uh, you know, first time agent something like that. So uh, then you come in, you put in your MLS number, hitting random keys. You have a choice of what kind of contract you're going to do, buyer, seller. You see that the fields change as you select which type. Listing, we're going to come back here and do buyer. And we're going to say, ooh, here's, here's a really complicated address, 1234 Street. In five corners, some states. No, you can put in any state name or state abbreviation that you would like. And we're going to do, uh, if that's a real zip code, I apologize in advance. Uh, you have different property types that you can put in. If you do new construction, you're going to see slightly different things. Um, I do residential. Uh, purchase price, let's say that we're doing a $100,000 home. Uh, the contract date, uh, well, let's say that that's today because we just signed a new contract today. Closing date, I'm going to bump that out a couple of months and just grab a random date. Due diligence date, I'm going to go out one month and grab a random date. Uh, earnest money, yeah, they were going to do, because I'm rolling my fingers across the, the keys, $123. Uh, closing costs, uh, we're estimating those at $5,000 and due diligence fee, let's say $2,000. Now, if there's a referral, you would click the referral here and you can put in the, the, the person's name, first and last name. And the referral company, if, it's, if uh, there's a particular company involved in that, their email and their phone contact, this way you have the ability to contact them for uh, getting them their cut of the, uh, of the proceeds here. Then you come up and put in your client name, and this is Bobby Buyer, for lack of a better name, b at b.fake. It looks like an email address. We don't verify that it's a real email address. We just look for the basic forms here. Uh, 555, fake phone number, fake company. In fact, I'm not even going to put a company in there. I'm going to leave that blank because that's going to be the case that you do most of the time. Now, if they're married, you would check that. Um, if client two, I have the ability to copy information from the first client uh, last name because you know a lot of times that'll be because they're married or something like that. Um, if I don't want to copy client one, I can clear that out. You see the kind of thing that's going on there. If I unclick married and I say copy from client one, um, I don't get the last name and they don't say that they're married. So just, just a little convenience. Now, the primary client is going to match. You see when I roll the mouse over that, you can't actually set that client because that's going to always match the contract type. If I were to change that to seller, then this would say seller, and this one would have said seller. Now, what you might have is a situation where you say, oh, I know who the buyer is, and I know who the seller is, so you could put the seller's name in here. 
seller Sam, some, or Sam Seller, whatever you, you get the idea. So you can you can put that information in. This is not required. The ones that are required are the ones that you see. I'm going to unclear out the Bobby there. You see the little asterisk there. Those are the fields that are required. So I'm going to put that back in. And you'll see, oh, closing attorney. I need to have some information here for a closing attorney. Now, I have a list of closing attorneys that I work with. And I'm going to just select one. Or if I didn't want to do that, I would clear that out. And I would put in the attorney's first name, last name, that kind of thing. If I know and I do need this, I need the co-op agent info, I'm going to do the same thing. Now, I may have a list of co-op agents that I've worked with. And in this case, again, this is randomly generated data. Um, so I'm, I'm going to just pick one. Otherwise, I would type in the name and the information for that person here. I have to have, um, I'm going to need that co-op information uh, at some point. Then, let's see. So I'm going to go pick a random one of the, sorry, I forgot to pick a, a lawyer. Just, sorry, lender. I had the lender on there as well. <laughs> Again, poor, poor language. Same trick for the closing attorney down there. So I know that this is a buyer of a cash purchase. I didn't have to have a lender and I uh, would unselect anything there. It's cash purchase, boom, done. I don't care, but this is not, so I'm going to select somebody. That's it. I then say save. Now, I apologize for the herky-jerkiness of this, but before we go in and look at what happened when you said save, we're going to go take a quick look at your email box. Now, inbox. So we come down here, we go to email, and we see that because there has been a new contract submission, yes, even if we did it ourselves, this happens whether we do it or the agent does it, you get a small email saying, hey, this is just to let you know, Adam Agent has submitted a new buyer contract, here's the address, and here's the link that you can go to to uh, go log into contract to close. Now, again, this is purely an informative thing for you so that you can be out and you can look at your phone and say, uh, you know, hey, great, somebody sent me a new contract, I got to get to work on it or uh, that kind of thing. So again, this is just built into the system. It goes to the system email address, the account email address that is set up for your, uh, for your Wackadoo account. That's it. I then say save. And watch what happens. I'm on the read page, just like I am on any other, any other resource that I'm looking at. And if I go back out to my inbox list, I see that I've got one of these items here. Well, if I've got a whole bunch of these that are being submitted at the same time, this page will get you know, a little bit more full. However, most of the time you're gonna have just one or two of these things going because you're gonna empty that out. You're going to come in here and you're going to say, okay, great. I'm happy with this. I want to approve this. I'm happy with the information that's there. I first have to indicate which set of tasks the contract is going to require. Now, if you don't know about task templates, go watch the other video. We're going to select our default list or whatever is on that list that is applicable. And I'm going to say approve. And what's going to happen is we're going to use the agent's name. We're going to use the task list, we're going to use the contract type, and we're going to generate all of the things that are necessary for doing a new contract. Well, look at what happens. We get put onto the active contracts page in edit mode so that we can go in and finish filling out the information. You'll notice that I have Adam agent, I have my co-op agent, my lender, my attorney, those are all selected here. I can say what that contact information is. Here's my note. This is my first, I'm a first time agent here. Now, I want to point out a couple of things. If I unselect this contract and I go, I then can see my agents page. I'm going to go click on my agents page. There's Adam agent. I didn't have an agency, an agent company for that particular agent. So we, the website puts in new agent for you. So you would come in and you would edit this and give that the name of the agency that they work with if they've not already done that. So uh, I'm going to go ZZZ agency, for example, and I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go back to my active contracts. Now notice that I have Adam 
agent selected. So I only see contracts that Adam agent is associated with. I'm going to unselect Adam because I don't want to have that filtering going on. So that's pretty much everything that you need to know about how to add a new contract. Pretty simple. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us directly as shown on the Contact Us page at wackadoo.info. Thank you.